What is up guys, Nams here from Saudi Zombie. So today I wanted to show you how to install any of the seven days to die overhaul mods manually. Manually install them is the best way to do it and a lot of the developers recommend manual installation. And it's actually pretty simple and very quick. The first thing I get asked a lot is where do I download the actual mod? Now there's a few websites, which I'll show you now. You could either try the seven days to die.com and go into the forums or seven days to die mods or the actual seven days to die wiki. But these websites aren't always up to date. So I recommend people go to the actual discord of the overhaul mods and I made it super simple for you. I've actually listed all the discords from all the major overhaul mods for seven days to die on the Saudi zombies website. So go to SaudiZombies.com, go to seven days to die section, go to overhaul mods. And here you will see a list of all the actual overhaul mods and a little brief description so you know the difference between each one. I do plan on expanding on this. And right here, we have the button here to go to each of the discords, the server info for us. As you know, Sully Zombies, we host a lot of the Seven Days to Die overhaul mods, but more on that later. So for now, let's go, for example, Darkness Falls. We'll click on that button. It will take us to the Darkness Falls Discord. And luckily, it has landed us on the page we want where the download link is. Now, if you're in the Discord and you can't find the download link, do take a moment to just scour the other channels because each overhaul mod developer kind of has their layout differently. For example, in the rules and info, this is where Kane has his download link, but as you can see, it's for Alpha 20.6 and 7, the stable versions, but we're now on Alpha 21.1, and he has his beta versions here. If we go over to, say, Ravenhurst, for example, in their Discord, they have it in their welcome panel as well, but other overhaul mod Discords, like Where's UK, have an actual channel called Download Links here. And I think the others do. Let's try War of the Walkers. Yep, they got a channel called Download Links. So for today's example, I'm actually going to install a Ravenhurst. So if I click on this, I know this link will automatically download the mod straight away for me because I did this yesterday. But other discords might not have a direct download link. For example, District Zero, if I click on this, it actually takes me to a download page. Most of the overhaul developers use a similar system. And so you just go to the free buttons here and go download zip or find a download zip button. So whilst that is downloading, go to your Steam, go to your seven days to die, right click go to manage and go to browse local files. Click on that and this will take you to where your seven days to die files are stored on your computer. And at the top here, you have what we call a file path. It's pretty much the path your computer takes to find where your files are. So for me, for example, it's in my local C drive, then program files, Steam, Steam apps common, and then seven days to die. And this is all the seven days to die files. What we wanna do is actually go one step back in that path. So let's go to common, go and back one step. And now I see an overview of all the games that I have installed on my computer or all the Steam games anyway. What we wanna do here is we wanna right click on Seven Days to Die, go to copy, and then right click anywhere in the space down here and go to paste. Or you can do control C, control V. Right, now that it's done, I have a Seven Days to Die folder and the new Seven Days to Die copy. Now, as I'm installed in Ravenhurst, I'm just gonna rename this to Ravenhurst. Now, I want to go through some of the most common mistakes people make when they install a Seven Days to Die overhaul, either manually or via the mod launcher. And that is a mismatch in the two different versions of your Seven Days to Die, which you have already installed on your computer, and the Seven Days to Die overhaul mod that you wish to install. So for example, right now, the latest version of Seven Days to Die is actually Alpha 21.2 Experimental. And as you can see here, I have Alpha 21.1. So there is one version more that I haven't installed on my computer because I usually just like to play the stable builds and not the experimental. But if we go to Darkness Force, for example, his latest build for his mod is for A21.1 Stable, which is the one I've got installed so that it will work. But if you have the 
latest version as of right now, which is A21.2, and you install an A21.1 Darkness Falls mod, they won't be compatible. You'll probably get a bunch of errors or it might not even work at all. So you have to make sure that the mod that you're downloading is compatible for the Seven Days to Die version that you have installed. And if you see you actually have the wrong one, you can just right click, go to properties here, then go to betas, and then you have all the different versions. So right now we're on stable, but if you're on the latest experimental build, that would automatically make you download the latest experimental 21.2, but we don't want that. We want 21.1 because that's what Kane says his mod is compatible with. So whether you're doing Darkness Falls, Age of Oblivion, Ravenhurst, War of the Walkers, just make sure you have the right version installed for the mod. And then the next step you want to do is go to your downloads folder. So here's a little tip. We're going to hold the shift key and then we're going to click on a file explorer icon at the bottom to open up a second window. And then we're gonna hold the start windows key and then press the left arrow key and it will throw that up to the side there. And now I have two file explorers right next to each other, which is easy for me to drag and drop the files over and also to show you how to install it. So let's open up that Ravenhurst mod. Now this is all vanilla files here and I've got District Zero, Ravenhurst and Darkness Fools. So we'll open up the Ravenhurst one and we see the main files here. I'm gonna open that up and then you see the mods and the readme file and all you need is that mods folder. But now I want to make you aware of yet another common issue that people have when they install an overhaul mod and that is forgetting the fact that they had some mods already installed in their seven days to die mods folder. So for example, if we just go back real quick, this is my original seven days to die vanilla folder, the one that I copied. And if I open that up, it has a couple of mods in there. If I go back to the Ravenhurst one that I copied over, it will have them in there as well. It has a random world generator, the improved one. And it also has the Sorry Zombie special demolition zombies, which when they blow up, they disable your guns for a minute or stop you from using any medical items. Now these zombies are not going to be compatible with Ravenhurst zombies or the, the mod in general. So what I have to do is make sure any mods in this mod folder because I know a lot of people have like UI mods and stack mods and stuff like that make sure all of them are deleted this mods folder should be empty that way you'll get no compatibility issues and no errors coming up so always double check and then the second issue that people sometimes do is, is that they drag the mods folder because you have to drag the data this is a Ravenhurst mod data into the mods folder and what some people have done is just drag mods folder into mods folder now that won't work because as I was telling you before about the file path in here, my system is looking for seven days to die in the C drive program file, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then into Ravenhurst. And then it's looking for mods. And then it opens that up here and it's looking for the actual Ravenhurst mod or whatever mod you have installed. But if it comes in here and finds another folder called mods, it's going to be confused. And by confused, I mean, it just won't work properly and you'll probably get errors if it works at all. So you've got two options here. You can open this up and you can copy and paste all of this in or what you can do is what I recommend is that you just go here to the main part and if you've got mods in there already which we deleted before you might as well just delete the whole mods folder and then you can take that mods folder and you can drag it in through this box here let's do the trick with the windows here there we go it's easier to see okay now that mods folder has transferred from the zip file from the downloads into my Ravenhurst and if I click on that and there it all is. So now the Seven Days to Die Ravenhurst mod is installed. So let me close all of this down, get some clarity here. Close this, close this, close that. I'm gonna go back to Ravenhurst. And now you see we have the executionables which were here already, but now when I click on them, it's gonna load the mods in the mod folder. So you have a few executionables or .exe files, or here they say applications. This one is the launcher. If you click on that, it will open up Seven Days to Die's option menu. This will launch Seven Days to Die with EAC. You don't want that, because none of the overhaul mods work with easy anti-cheat. So you want to use this executable at the top and that will launch seven days to die with no EAC. So let me double click that. And as you can see, 
Ravenhurst is now installed and loading up. Another common problem that we come to, which is not an issue of your installation or anything, but it's just a bug with TFP is the Epic Online services. So Epic Online is actually like Steam. It's just their own version of it. And a few alphas ago, TFP put Seven Days to Die on there. And for some reason, it gets confused. It's think I'm trying to load up Seven Days to Die without logging into the Epic Online services. So a few things you can do, you can either do play offline or you can do retry a few times that will eventually initialize it but if it doesn't you can literally just go and get unreal engines epic online services open it up and just be signed in and it will even though you haven't got the game on there it will just work so let's try the retry because that usually works if you type it a few times and there you go i have a ravenhurst installed so let's minimize that for a second so say i wanted to add a another overhaul mod i would just copy the original vanilla files to create a second copy i could rename that darkness falls age of oblivion War the Walkers, whichever, and just go through the same process of downloading that mod, then installing it by dragging and dropping the mods folder into the actual system here. So just to reiterate the few issues that you might go through, one is the version mismatch between your seven days to die, which you've got installed, because whatever you've got installed here will be what you're going to be copying here. So that version on the Steam that you saw is actually this folder here. So make sure you have the right Steam version installed that is compatible with the right mod in which you wish to play. The other issue is already having mods in the mods folder. Make sure this is empty. And the third one is when you do install it because every overhaul mod usually looks like this. It has a mods folder. So this is Darkness Falls. You just drag mods into here, not mods into the mods folder. So as I said before, good practice is just delete that mods folder and drag the new one in. Same with here, District Zero, same thing. Got a mods folder, drag it in. Once that's transferred over, click this top ES file and it will launch seven days to die overhaul mod of your choice now if after all of that you are still having issues and errors are coming up that can only mean one thing and that your original seven days to die files were already corrupted so what i mean by that is the folder that you copied which was your base seven days to die game had some issues and then when you pasted it and then you threw the overhaul mod on it it just didn't like it now unfortunately what that means is that you're going to have to delete the installation that you have just done and then go ahead and fix the original seven days to die base files now you can do that by going to steam and going to your seven days to die right click go to properties and then go to installation and click this button here verify the integrity of game files but what i recommend is just a straight up reinstall of seven days to die and again you can do that with the right click manage uninstall and once you have uninstalled it keep this little box open here this one because there will still be a seven days to die file there so uninstall from steam then go to here and delete this folder entirely then go back to steam and reinstall seven days to die once you've done that you should have a new file here called seven days to die and it should be a squeaky clean non-corrupted vanilla seven days to die and then again you go through the process of copying that and then pasting it here and then reinstall in which overhaul mod that you were doing and then one last thing i want to mention is the actual the shortcuts what we used to be able to do is we used to be able to take the .exe we could copy it we could paste it onto our desktop here i could even rename this ravenhurst and then when i double clicked it i would be able to open the game or ravenhurst or whatever overhaul mod just like that but for some reason nowadays i can't do that i don't know if you know the solution to this please let me know but it works if i double click it in inside here so of course that's going to be a little bit annoying every time you want to play your overhaul mod you have to navigate all the way through this file path just to get to the ravenhurst or whatever overhaul mod.exe so i have found a couple of workarounds and it's pretty simple you just click on that but don't double click it you don't want to execute the .exe you just want to highlight it like this then you want to go to home and copy path now what that's going to do is copy this path but include the actual .exe at the end then go to your desktop right click anywhere go to new go to shortcuts and then right click here and paste and that should paste the path which as you can see is identical to the top but right at the end we have the dot exe and we go next and then we're going to name this ravenhurst and there we have it now you have a ravenhurst 
shortcut on your desktop. So I hope you enjoyed that and that all makes sense to you. I did try and keep it very simple and clear and somewhat to the point. And these overhaul mods are a hell of a lot of fun. So I would recommend giving them all a try, but be warned they are quite hard, especially Darkness Falls. It can be a bit overwhelming from the get go and overhaul mods like Undead Legacy and Ravenhurst can be quite a grind, but if you're like me and you like that type of thing, then they're perfect. But what I like about these overhaul mods and pretty much gaming in general is the social aspect of working in a team and surviving. And if you like that type of thing as well, and you were bored playing alone, then I highly recommend coming and joining us at Sorry Zombies. We have all the overhaul mods on a 24 hour server, so you can connect anytime and play with anyone you want. And it's very easy to connect to any of our servers. You simply just bring up the website I showed you earlier and you find the overhaul mod that you want to play. So we are on Ravenhurst right now. In fact, let me just show you. If I go to the Ravenhurst, I have a button here, a click to connect button. I just simply click that with Ravenhurst open up in the background and boom, it's just gonna throw me straight into the Saudi Zombie server. No need to try and search us on the server listings or enter the IP and port manually. Just go to that website, click on the button and as long as you're Ravenhurst, Darkness Falls, or whatever overhaul mod you have is up, it will throw you in without a fuss. All right, that's it for me. If you like the video, please, you know, it's YouTube, so like and subscribe, it always helps. And in the comments below, I want to know what is your favorite overhaul mod and why? Tell me why it's your favorite overhaul mod in those comments. And until next time, don't be sorry.